Question 4. DS. Is the average or arithmetic mean of A, B, C, D, and E equal to their median? Condition 1. A is less than B, which is less than C, which is less than D, which is less than E. Condition 2. A, B, C, D, and E are consecutive integers. Solution. Now we will solve this DS question using the variable approach. Common mistake type 4A. If you get C as an answer too easily, then consider A or B as an answer. Let's look at the information from the question prompt or the original condition. This is an integer question, and therefore one of the key questions. We need to watch out for CMT 3 and 4 in key questions. Also, the answer to this question will be in terms of a yes or no, and therefore, we apply CMT 1 to this question. Don't forget that CMT 1 or CMT 2 apply to all DS questions. Let's apply the three steps suggested previously. Follow the first step of the variable approach by modifying and rechecking the original condition and the question. We have to find out whether the average or arithmetic mean of A, B, C, D, and E is equal to their median. Follow the second and third steps. From the original condition, we have five variables, A, B, C, D, and E. To match the number of variables with the number of equations, we need five equations. Since conditions one and two will provide one equation each, E would most likely be the answer. This is also a typical 50 to 51 level question, so be careful. In general, questions with a mixture of integers and statistics are the most difficult questions that are related to CMT 4, A, or B. Recall three principles, choose C as the most likely answer. Let's look at both conditions together. We know that A, B, C, D, and E are consecutive integers in this order. Since they are consecutive integers, the average or arithmetic mean and the median are the same, so we get yes. The answer is unique, yes, so the conditions combined are sufficient, according to CMT1, which means that the answer will be in terms of a unique yes or no. Thus. C seems to be the answer. However, since this question is an integer question, which is also one of the key questions, we should apply CMT 4A, which means that if you get C as an answer too easily, then consider A or B as an answer. So, we have to consider each condition separately. Condition 1 tells us, that A is less than B, which is less than C, which is less than D, which is less than E. If A equals 1, B equals 2, C equals 3, D equals 4, and E equals 5, then their average or arithmetic mean is 3, which is equal to their median. So we get yes. But if A equals 1, B equals 2, C equals 3, D equals 4, and E equals 10, then their average or arithmetic mean is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 10 over 5, which equals 4, which is not equal to their median 3, so we get no. The answer is not unique, so the condition is not sufficient according to CMT1, which means that if you get both answers yes and no, it is not sufficient. Condition 2 tells us that A, B, C, D, and E are consecutive integers. Since consecutive integers have a property that their average or arithmetic mean is equal to the median, we get yes. The answer is unique, yes. So the condition is sufficient according to CMT1, which means that the answer will be in terms of a unique yes or no. The median equals the average, or arithmetic mean, for consecutive integers. This often appears on the exam, so remember this. 
Condition two alone is sufficient. So, B is the correct answer. If the question has both C and B as its answer, then B is an answer rather than C by the definition of DS questions. This question is a 50 to 51 level question and can easily be solved using the relationship between the variable approach and common mistake type 3 or 4A or B. If you completely understand the process of linking the variable approach with CMT 4A, I guarantee you will receive a score above 50 in GMAT math. Answer B.